all right guys welcome back this is part three and in this tutorial you will learn how to avoid inserting null values and avoid data duplication and by data duplication that means we already have in the database we are already having the data in the database we need to avoid the reasons from entering the same data at the same time and we need also need to avoid users from entering empty empty data into our data by they type in nothing but they type they click on a C button here that says the data. Okay. So let's start with the null values. First we make sure let's put this in an else if and from here let's say if <coughs> txt contact dot text you make some of them required and others not required if txt contact dot text is equal to empty string or txt username dot text is equal to Equal to or or txt past dot text is also equal to empty. Then you will say message message. Okay. Now that is done, which means website and the others are optional. But to the most important part, how do we avoid data duplicate? Now data duplicate is very essential. For example, if we have a users table here. I'm having this username as Slyman and another one here. If we are having two different users with the same username. If they are logging into our system, which means they can crash our system. So it should not be allowed. So we need to avoid data duplicates, which means one data should be inserted once at a time, but not the same data inserted being inserted into a database twice. It should be avoided. Okay. So let's on and create a sub for that the function to check for that so you say public sub say let's call it test underscore underscore query One argument, one argument, it is one argument. Sorry, guys, so one look at my door. That's great. So let's continue. Okay. Now Let's put everything in try catch block so we don't get our application crashed. And let's open database and let's close our database. Now, okay, and let's Catch our exceptions here.
Now we need to declare some few variables. So we say public SQL D as new my SQL data then public SQL DS as new data set. Okay, that's it. Over here, if we do it then, let's dispose a database. Okay, and let's make sure our database is closed after we get an exception. Con state. Let's see the copy and then con dot close. I really prefer you always do this because if there's any exceptions, remember you've opened the database. Then in that way, it won't close the database, but it'll rather open the database, giving you more, more, more runtime errors, and you you find it difficult sometimes to locate these errors. So inside the open and close database, say TMD equal to new my SQL command and it takes to document the query and a connection, which is called email. S Q L D S Q L D is equal to me my S Q L data adapter and it takes T M D. Then next we say S Q L Data set is equal to new data set. Then next one is the SQL D SQL D. So we have to follow to type slow, not to rush. Because when you do this rushing program, you get a lot of errors. And it takes SQLDS. Okay. What is it? Phil, you can see Phil is not spelled correctly. Solved and now this query. Okay, I think we are good to go. So let's come straight here before we insert or before we execute this function here. We need to test the data which is being submitted to this query according to the database if that data according it to a according to a specific column if that data is not already in the database if it is not then we will save but if it is already in the database then we will tell our user that this data is already in the database so you need to choose another one so this is what i'm talking about we need to implement it 
show you will see SKO, which is instance of our control class dot run query. When we don't run query, we have test. Usually, I use a lot of for this function in my, in my program, so I use run query. So, we, which what query are we testing it against? So, we see select star from uses where username now we are testing you see in our database we have we have username password website contact you can actually test According to any column you wish, but in most applications and most websites, they always test at, test against the username column. So we always do the same. We also do the same. So select star from users. Select star from users. Meaning select everything from users. Where username. Where username is what? Is you can use in this part you can use the like keyword or you can just say it's equal to the into percent sign. You say txt username dot test. It text not test. Okay. I remember the percent sign isn't here, and that will give you a big big error. Okay, now error soft. Now, so the if you are inserting, it will check the username column and see if it is not according to the username. The username, if it's not according to any username, then it will now execute the query successfully. But if it is, then it won't. It will tell the user. We need to tell the user that that username or that user already exists. So we say, how do we do that? We say if SQL dot is SQL dot SQL data no we need to use the data set ds dot tables dot count which means we are counting the database, the data, all data in the database. Count is greater than zero, then count. Which means if we check, we execute this query and we have more than zero. Rules, which means we are having rules. Then this is what you need to say to the user. MST, MST, which means we are having that database already exist. We need to tell the, the user. So we can even concatenate and say txt username here and put an upper sign here. This is concatenation. Say, remember to bring dot test. Test. Okay. Already <coughs> exist in the data base. Okay. Else, else, if zero rows was re was returned, then it means there is no username in the database as specified in the text box. So then you go ahead and, and save or insert that data. Else you will call the create user function. So you see, I missed the else, else. Boom. Problems solved. 
let's let's flip out and i hope this done too vicious to do doesn't mess up i need to restart it my pc i think has been on for about a month it's really 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 booming it's tired Not so this code has been taken out. That's good. You can take it out. Okay, now if you press empty, you see empty user already exists okay because fill all the details now what is the problem here remember we are testing the query before checking the validation that is what is making us so you can just put the other codes on top so let's say i choose this name again, Simon, and add the same one, Simon, password as Simon, and contact as the same. Alphabet only dig it. Let me say, um, let me retype because if you don't, you can see. You see, it is working perfectly. So you see. Man. And let's see, you see, already exists in the data base. Is it saved? No, that is never true that you don't see it. Okay, now let's find the error and solve it. You see, we are seeing after we test a database, but we didn't, we never really exist the sub. So if that is true, you just say exit sub. It means it will continue to come here and then execute anything. So instead of username, we choose. We have start. Okay. Now we are good to go. Okay. Simon. 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 Depending on the validation we did in the previous. So we can only enter the gate. Like this. And if we type password, else we get an error. And this which is already exist. So you see, slime man already exists. And this time it doesn't save it. Because in the other one, we didn't execute, we didn't exit the sub. So it continued to execute the sub. So we need to exit the sub so that it doesn't continue to exit the sub. Thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and ask questions in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video. In this tutorial, we are going to do update and delete functions. See you.